You're watching our tour of Switzerland and we are now heading to the final city on the tour. We're going to Zurich, the economic capital of the country, not the political capital, that's Bern, but Zurich, what a spot. Zurich surprised us in a lot of ways with its old world charm. While most people know that Zurich is a modern banking center, you might be surprised to discover the charms of its extensive old town, which is probably the largest in Switzerland. Zurich has a high quality of life. In fact, it's been ranked as the world's best city in which to live by the Mercer Human Resource Foundation because of its superb cultural and economic and environmental conditions. Visitors can take pleasure in this wonderful lifestyle enjoying friendly, efficient services while exploring its historic sites. And the first thing that we want to do after checking into the hotel is get out and take a walk on Niederdorfstrasse, the same street that our hotel is on. It's the heart of the old town. It's really a wonderful street. It goes for about one mile. It changes names a few times and it has some lovely side streets that are also for the pedestrian. There's some excellent restaurants, there are modern shops, they sell clothing and antiques and furniture and souvenirs and books and everything that you'd need. And there's cafes, candy shops, coffee shops, food to go, elegant restaurants and we're going to show it all to you as we thoroughly investigate Zurich. The old town extends across both sides of the river Limmat. We started out on what's called the right bank on the east side and now we're on the left bank on the west side of town which is a little bit more upscale. You've got some really high-end shops here. There's quite a few well-dressed bankers and we'll be approaching the the main street of the Bahnhofstrasse in just a moment. So this is where a lot of the high-end businesses are located. But both sides are very pleasant and very comfortable and filled with things to see. As we stroll along, continuing along on this first day's orientation walk, do some window shopping as we go. There'll be some free time later for all of our travelers who might want to come back and do some serious shopping on their own. But for now, we're sticking together and getting an overview. The Renweg has always been one of the main streets of the city for hundreds of years. And it will lead you up to the Lindenhof, which is really where the city began. And it's really quite easy to find it. It's up on this small hill. And from the Lindenhof, you have a fine view across the river to the main section of the old town and the tall spires of the Gross Munster, Zurich's main church in the distance. There's linden trees growing in Lindenhof. It's just a park today, but in the past it was the site of linden. some important Roman structures. There's a Roman tombstone, one of the only Roman artifacts that are still visible in Zurich. Go down. This town was really founded by the Romans as were many of the towns throughout Europe 2,000 years ago. You exit Lindenhof down the south steps along Platzgasse and that leads you back into this lovely shopping area of the old town. There's some little town squares and water fountains. Zurich boasts over a thousand water fountains. They claim to have more water fountains than any other town in Switzerland. And you get into this maze of lanes that lead this way and that way. Well, don't worry about getting lost. It's small enough that you'll soon find yourself again. And in the midst of the alleys, you can't miss the towering St. Peter's Church. That steeple has Europe's largest clock, which is 28 and a half feet across. And it's 500 years old and still keeps accurate time. The quiet square next to the church is one of the town's most charming spots. It's Zurich's oldest parish church. It was built in the 7th century originally. 
and that Romanesque tower was added in the 13th century. See, a lot of these buildings are from the Middle Ages and the 1500s, the 1600s, and yet their interiors are completely modern. They've been rebuilt, they've been renovated, and kept up to date. They've been used continuously over their hundreds of years of history, and that's always how something is properly maintained, is by being used. Augustin Ergasse is one of the very beautiful streets of this old town. Notice its gentle curvature that leads you on. You wonder what's around the bend, and it's lined with these beautiful old facades. A lively spot with thriving shops and outdoor cafes, a lot of people out walking. So pleasant. And this is going to take us out of the old town and now we're about to go around the bend onto Bahnhofstrasse, which is the great modern street in the heart of downtown Zurich. And here's where you've got the department stores, there's a lot of banks and corporate headquarters. There's a tram system in Zurich. They have quite a few different tram lines. These are quiet electric trams, no pollution and hardly any sound coming from them. It's a great system. No cars are allowed here on Bahnhofstrasse, just pedestrians and trams. So it makes a very efficient place to get around. We stopped into Hiltl Restaurant. It's a vegetarian restaurant that is the oldest vegetarian restaurant in Europe. It's been in the same location for over a hundred years. And you can see why. It is really a popular and fantastic place. It's a self-service vegetarian buffet. All sorts of salads and cooked vegetables and deep fried items. They've got desserts and breads. And everything is delicious here. You pile as much as you want onto your plate and then you just weigh it at the cashier. So it's very simple for self-service. It's not cheap. After all, we're in Switzerland, we're in Europe. Uh, to have a fine meal like this it would cost you about $15 or maybe $20 if you really piled a lot onto that plate, as some of us did. It was so delicious that we came back for more the next day. Well, that's something about discovering uh, an excellent restaurant in a city that you might not know very well. You're always tempted to go back to the same place and have another meal there. And there's pluses and minuses to that kind of strategy. You know, it's kind of a sure thing if you enjoyed it the first time, but it's always nice to explore and get some different atmosphere for your next meal. After all, we're just here in Zurich for a couple of days and we want to see as much variety as possible, including taking a walk in the evening after a rain. Now, don't let the rain stop you when you're in one of these old towns because as you can see, if it rains and then the rain stops, that's a magical moment, especially at twilight. You've got the cobblestones reflecting the glistening lighting. You've got the late twilight that's still lighting up the sky and the sprinkles will come and go. You've got to pop your umbrella up and then you can put it away. And it's really an interesting time to be out. And then pick a nice restaurant for dinner and your evening's complete. Here we're at the Adler restaurant. It's part of the Hotel Adler in the heart of the old town. Enjoying cheese fondue. That's certainly one of the most famous of all Swiss dishes. And it's really tasty and really quite simple. You have the melted cheese and bread. And you dip your bread in there swirl it around, let it cool down a bit, and that's a nice appetizer, and then tuck into the main course. Swiss are great for all sorts of main dishes. Like any place, you'll get your fish and chickens and meats. 